Welcome back, my fellow intellectuals. We're going to be continuing our derivation of Newton's second law in polar coordinates. So where we last left off, we had just derived what the velocity or the time derivative of the position vector was in polar coordinates. Uh, it was given by this last line here. But now what we have to do is take the time derivative of that term so we can get the acceleration in polar coordinates. So let's begin uh, there. Let's just take the time derivative of the line we just finished with. So we have the time derivative of r dot r hat uh, plus r theta dot theta hat. All right then. And we're going to break this up into two separate derivatives. So we have the time derivative of the first term plus the time derivative of the second term. And I'm just going to label these uh, one and two, and we're going to focus on each one of them independently. So for the first one, uh, we're, it's just a product of two terms. So we're just going to do a product rule here. So this, the, um, this is going to be my f, and this is going to be my g. So remember your product rule, if you have a product of two functions, f and g, they're both functions of time, it just gives you f dot g plus f g dot. And so in this case, r dot's my f, r hat's my g. So uh, we're going to do uh, r double dots, the first term, times r hat, plus r dot times the time derivative of dr hat dt. Now we're going to have to figure out what the time derivative of dr hat, uh, with, of what r hat is, uh, but we know that uh, r hat Right, so d by dt of r hat, that's the same as taking the time derivative of cosine of theta x hat plus sine of theta y hat. And if we try and take out, uh, you know, carry out this, der this uh, derivative, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here, we're going to get uh, sine theta, negative sine theta, theta dot x hat plus cosine of theta theta dot y hat. And if we factor out a theta dot from each term, we will get this, which might look familiar because if you look back up here, those two things are equivalent. That is just theta hat. So if that's just theta hat. We just realized that the time derivative of r hat is just theta dot theta hat. Okay, so this is dr hat dt. So that's going to be useful to know in the future. So this, this boils down to r dot r hat plus r dot theta dot theta hat. Okay, so this is the result of the first term being differentiated. Now if you want to go on to term two, so term two, which is the derivative of, let me remind myself here so I don't make a mistake, it's r theta dot theta hat. Now in this case we have three terms that all depend on time. So what we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to uh, just use a product rule, but uh, two product rules actually. So let's just call r theta dot rf and then theta hat rg. And applying the same logic we're going to have the time derivative of r theta dot times theta hat plus r theta dot times d theta hat dt. Okay, and remember we just have to use the product rule uh, on the first term here. So uh, this is going to be our f, this is going to be our g. So we're going to have r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot. This is all in the theta hat direction. And uh, what we're going to do uh, on, on the other side is just take the time derivative of theta hat. So it's plus r dot but remember theta hat can be expressed from above as negative sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat. So negative sine theta x hat plus cosine of theta y hat. And let's, let's just take this derivative here. So this ends up being r theta dot times so the derivative of negative sine theta is a negative cosine of theta, uh, theta so then theta dot in the x hat direction. And then the derivative of cosine of theta is a negative sine of theta, theta dot in the y hat direction. 
And if we factor out a negative theta dot, right? So we'll have a negative r theta dot squared because there's a theta dot in both of these terms. What we're going to realize is that we're going to have cosine of theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. And what you know, this is just r hat. I know I'm saying r and hat and theta and hat a lot, but it's very interesting to see how all these derivatives of unit vectors are corresponding to each other. So what we found here is that, um, what was I going to say here? This is, well, this, this whole thing here, right? I think what I want to say is d theta hat dt is just equal to negative theta dot r hat. That's sort of one of the takeaways for this part. But combining everything, right? So in, in this uh, second term, we have, uh, we have r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot theta hat. And then we have minus r theta dot squared in the r hat direction. Okay, and so if we combine everything, right, so from the uh, first term, this is what we have. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to bring it down here. So I'll just say combining one and two. So combining one plus two, right, we're going to have, that's, the, that's from one, and then we're going to have this, oh, let me cut it a little better. We're going to have this from two, and we're going to add them together. And we're going to keep track of everything that has the same hat. So let's combine like unit vector terms. So in the r hat direction, uh, we should have r double dot minus r theta dot squared, and this is in the r hat direction. And in the theta hat direction, we'll have plus um, what are we going to have here? We're going to have plus r theta double dot, and we have two of these r theta dot terms. So we have plus two r dot theta dots in the theta hat direction. And that should be it for our acceleration. So this is our acceleration in polar coordinates, right? So this is the acceleration in polar coordinates. But now let's use the acceleration vector to determine what Newton's laws should look like. So remember, Newton's law says that f is equal to ma, right? But remember, this applies to any uh, you know, direction or any coordinate, right? So imagine i can be either r or theta. So let's look at what the forces correspond to in each direction. So in the radial direction, so in the r direction, the force, the component of force in the radial direction will just be m a dotted with r hat, right? Because we're just concerning ourselves with the force in the r hat direction. And remember, the acceleration only has, uh, well, it has this component in the r hat direction. And remember that r hat dot theta hat is equal to zero. So the, uh, well, we're essentially just going to pick out this, this radial component of the acceleration. So it'll be m r double dot minus r theta dot squared r hat. And this is going to be our radial force. So this is radial force right here. It's the force that acts in the radial direction. And then in the theta direction, we do the same exact thing, except we take the dot product with theta hat. So f theta is equal to ma dot theta hat. That's just going to be equal to m times r theta. Oh, and I should say, um, one thing is that I should drop this hat up here. This should not be a hat because essentially we're taking the dot product between r hat and r hat. So maybe I'll, I'll show for the theta case, right? In full generality, what I'm doing here is I'm doing m times r 
theta hat theta double dot sorry I'm getting my my words all tripped up here r dot theta dot theta hat and I'm dotting that in the theta direction right and this is just equal to one so that's why it goes away and you just have the component and not a vector so this is the magnitude of the force in the angular direction and so this I call this the angular force right here angular force and there you have it those are Newton's that is, that is Newton's second law in polar coordinates for both the radial direction and in the theta direction. So I hope you learned something in this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope uh, you gained something from it. And uh, look forward to more videos just like this coming in the future. So thanks for watching.